we got a surprise visit from a 9th Division veteran, General William C. Westmoreland. He dropped in during Operation Fort C, in which we bagged a lot of Viet Cong supplies and equipment. We were all pleased to see him wearing a 9th Division patch from his service with the old 9th in Tunisia. We kept moving, or rather sloshing, ahead. Wetness was the order of the day, the week, and the month. Most of us would feel strange if we ever got dry. Well, it did simplify taking a bath. And washing laundry. Gradually, we began to move more and more on the waterways, not in them. They became highways, not obstacles. Of course, the division's helicopters continued to play a major role as air taxis for troops. To transport artillery, vehicles, even other helicopters. And to extend the medical civil assistance program, MedCap, deep into isolated Delta villages whose inhabitants seldom see a doctor. The medic showed that sometimes the best medicine comes in the form of a laugh. The fixed-wing spotter planes, nicknamed bird dogs, had the job of guiding aircraft into strikes at enemy positions. While the jets orbit overhead, the bird dogs take a run at the VC positions to mark them with smoke rockets. The pilots are highly trained Air Force Forward Air Controllers, FAC. They don't hesitate to fly low within a few hundred feet of the enemy in order to bring the planes in on target. The daring and precision of these men is a major reason for the tremendous effectiveness of inter-service cooperation between the Army and the Air Force. The war in the Delta produced another form of inter-service cooperation in which the 9th Division played a major role. The Army and Navy combined resources to create a unique strike force to which the Air Force also gave fire support. It was called the Mobile Riverine Force. The 2nd Brigade of the 9th Division was its primary combat unit. One must go back to the American Civil War to find a major precedent for this inland waterways task force. Army and Navy working together as a fighting team. When the men go out on a mission, they have the close support of the Navy flotilla with all the facilities necessary to resupply and maintain them. The soldiers live aboard the USS Benoa and the USS Colleton when not fighting. These floating barracks hold a 30-day supply of fresh food and provide medical, dental, and other facilities. The auxiliary personnel lighter also accommodates men of the Mobile Riverine Force. The USS Ascari contains a complete machine shop and facilities needed to maintain and repair weapons and equipment. Seaborne supplies are usually brought up from Vung Tau or Dong Tam by LST. In case of need, choppers bring in supplies directly to the decks of ships. 